we got a scary Alec Manoa update, and look away if you're a big fan of his because he didn't immediately report to AAA Buffalo, and now he's going to go join the team over there. But he seems to be a lot further away from the major leagues so, uh, than we may have thought. So I'll break that down on this episode of Jay's Digest, as well as a Ross Atkins article that dropped. There's some reports that he may be on the hot seat, so we'll break that down and much more coming up next. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Brionis, alongside host Nick Goss. And uh, shout out to Canada for winning their first game in the FIBA World Cup against France. But uh, a lot of Blue Jays news coming out, Nick. Alec Manoa is finally going to report to AAA Buffalo. Very unconventional path uh, that they took with that. Usually a player reports right away, especially if you have minor league options like Alec Manoa does. And you could actually be fined under the collective bargaining agreement if you don't agree to to go ahead and, and take that demotion. So it was kind of weird that Alec Manoa stuck around in Toronto. Apparently the Jays were doing a lot of testing and, and some other things that were not baseball related. So pretty concerning on that front. And who knows what to expect going forward. I guess you could rule out the possibility of him being a September call-up for the Blue Jays. Very, very weird stuff. Very scary if you're an Alec Manoa fan, like you said. But before we get into the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 8,000. It would mean a lot. And Peter, a lot of news to get into today. Obviously, we have a game tonight, but let's just get into all the news. Let's start with the first topic here, which is a scary Alec Manoa update, like you said. And, you know, scary, I think, is the best word to describe it. His whole season this year has been a disaster um, for the Blue Jays. It's been a disaster for Alec Manoa getting called down, called back up too early. And this was a report from a few days ago. Now, this isn't the most recent update, but kind of giving you a timeline of where things are at. So this was back in August 22nd, so I believe Tuesday. He said Alec Manoa is still in Toronto per John Schneider. It's an unconventional setup as Manoa was optioned 11 days ago. Continues working out. And the vision is to have him pitching a triple A again. And, if, of course, there's other alternatives that they don't want to you know, use Alec Manoa if there is an injury, but this dropped yesterday, which is very, very interesting. So Ben Nicholas said, per sources, Manoa is slated to join the Jays AAA affiliate in Syracuse uh, yesterday with no structural issues. He's now preparing to build back up, but there is no timeline or start date set for him, according to manager John Schneider. Now, Peter, very weird. Again, this has been, it's almost a surreal situation going from, you know, a Cy Young finalist to a guy who now it doesn't even seem to be pitching in triple a or not for the foreseeable future you can kind of rule out a september call up at this point he has reported to triple a which is good so i don't think it was a matter of him not wanting to necessarily but it seems like the blue jays maybe want to get his head right his uh physicals right before they want him to pitch anymore yeah i understand that but at the same time you got a major league ball club to run and let's say someone does go down with an injury who's going to start is it going to be Trevor Richards? Okay, fine. Both then you're Francis. handcuffing yourself. Then you're handcuffing yourself in the bullpen. Uh, yeah, B Bowden Francis is another option, but you don't want those guys starting games in a playoff stretch. I, I don't know if you want Alec Manoa to necessarily start them either, the way that he's pitched this season. But he is someone that has had success and someone that you can rely upon to go deeper in games. So I just don't understand what the weight was you want to you want to build him back up he didn't have any injuries when you did send him down it was purely performance based and Hunjin Ryu won that fifth starter spot as he should have he's been pitching very well and Alec Manoa was the odd man out they were going with the six man rotation because of the loaded schedule 17 games in 17 days you didn't have that anymore so having a six starter just didn't make any more sense but you still got to go out there and get your work in you know, you can't just be idle for 11 days and not pitch. And then if something happens, uh, if someone goes down, even if it's a, a big-time arm like Kevin Gosman, not knock on wood, you need backup options in AAA. And there's no one right now. Who's going to come up? Mitch White? No. You don't, you don't want that happening. So he needs to get his work in. I don't understand what the holdup was. I'm glad that he's going to rejoin the team now, but it just – the whole situation was just weird to me, and there's got to be something more that the Jays are not telling us. It can't just purely be physical or performance based. I fully suspect once the season ends, we'll get maybe a more you know truth behind this whole situation, kind of like you did with George Springer at the end of uh, once the season ended last year with his injury needing surgery. So maybe we'll find some of the stuff there. But let us know what your thoughts are on that. Very weird situation, and the Jays are definitely preying on no more injuries for the rest of this season if they want to have any hopes of uh, making the playoffs. And it's at a point now where we're relying on, you know, an aging Hunjin Ryu to be that fifth starter and to be a guy who's reliable in games that we need to win every one. But 
Speaking uh, on a bit less of, you know, the current season front, but a wild Ross Atkins article was revealed. And Peter, I figured I wanted to touch on this because we've been talking about this a little bit, you know, off camera. And what this article essentially says is who gets fired if the Blue Jays disappoint this season once again. Now, Peter, the article refers to Ross Atkins getting fired, John Schneider. They go through the whole thing. They make some, you know, it seems like informed speculation about, you know, maybe Ross Atkins will be on the hot seat. Could the Jays fire Ross Atkins? Talks about his timeline here, the offseason ac acquisitions and uh, and strange stuff like that. And if the Jays fail to have a successful end of season, it's hard to point the fingers at anywhere but Ross Atkins for his roster construction and relative lack of attention at the trade deadline. Peter, what are your thoughts on this? And we've spoke about this, and this is something we're going to continue to speak about, especially if the Jays miss the playoffs. But do you think the Jays are going to fire someone? Or do you think they're going to fire Ross Atkins if they fail to make the playoffs or even get bounced in the wild card round one? Is it Ross Atkins' fault that Vladimir Guerrero Jr. has a 117 WRC plus, Nick? Nope. <laughs> Answer that question for me. No. And is it Ross Atkins' fault that other hitters are underperforming? It's not. He built this team the way it needed to be built. They were a flawed roster last season. They had too many right-handed hitters that struck out, and they didn't have good enough pitching. They changed all of that. They made their defense better. They made their pitching significantly better, and they made their lineup more diversified. But all of their players that needed to be the top dogs this year took a step back. Vladdy took a step back. Bo has been Bo, but... You know, there's only there's only so much one guy can do in a lineup, and and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is that type of player. He everyone gravitates towards him. Everyone goes as he goes, and when he's not performing the way that he's supposed to be performing, it shows on the rest of the lineup. Obviously, we wish Dalton Varsho could have been a little bit better, but all the guys that he went out and signed this off season, they've been bargains. They've been absolute bargains in that sense where they've provided so much value and made this team a lot better than it would have been had they not been there. So I think Ross Atkins is the last person to blame. I think John Schneider is not to blame either. I look at the hitting strategist. I look at Dave Hudgens. I look at Don Manningly, who's had a significant impact in that clubhouse. Pretty bad impact, in my opinion. And then I look at Guillermo Martinez as well. All those guys that are feeding you information on how you should be approaching your at-bats, on how you should be hitting, how you should be attacking those pitchers, they're not doing a great job. And they've been failing this offense miserably. And I'm, I'm looking at those three guys that I just mentioned right there that I think uh, when you look at cleaning house, those are the names that got to go. Not John Schneider, not, uh, not anyone else, not Ross Atkins, not Mark Shapiro. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think the process behind Ross Atkins' offseason was phenomenal. The players, you know, they didn't perform the way they were supposed to, and no one could have predicted that. Vershaw's having a phenomenal end to his season, which is kind of providing some some good value there. Teoscar Hernandez is having an okay season. He wasn't going to re-sign in Toronto. And then you have Lourdes and Moreno having pretty mediocre seasons as well. Lourdes doing all right. But at the end of the day, the trades were very, very good. The process was great. The only, you know, strike you can get against Ross Atkins this season was not getting one more bat at the deadline. And I guess the one bat they did get was Paul DeYoung. But again, the market wasn't necessarily there. And at the end of the day... The uh, the trade uh, deadline was a bit of a disappointment for many teams, not just the Toronto Blue Jays. And I agree. I don't think John Schneider is the issue. Will he maybe be the scapegoat if they lose and miss the playoffs? It's possible. I think if they yeah, do. But Nick, you talk about deadline additions, man. And and is Tommy Pham going to be the one to save this team? Like probably not. I I don't think so. You know, it's it's an in house problem. And, and I'm sorry to cut you yeah. off there, but it it's just. And that's what like that's the overall sentiment around Blue Jays Twitter that Ross Atkins didn't do enough, but what could he have possibly done? Answer me that. Yeah, it was rough, and obviously it looks worse because the one guy they did get was uh, historically bad. But again, I'm not gonna fault him. I think if they do lose the playoffs to wrap up this topic, or if they don't make the playoffs, they're gonna clean house. They'll probably keep John Schneider. I don't think Ross Atkins' job is in any danger. I mean, it might be, but I highly doubt it. I think, like you said, the hitting you know coaches and. Something's going to be done, and that will uh, be very, very interesting. But moving on to the quick last topic now, which is John Schneider calls out the team. Kevin Gosman, yesterday in our video, we discussed, he's kind of sounded off in the Blue Jays. John Schneider went in a bit more of a direct approach uh, last night after a really, really bad game. And this is from Ben Nicholson Smith. John Schneider and the importance of turning things around. There's no time to wait. We've got to do this right effing now, is what the actual expletive was. So uh, go look up that clip if you want. It's pretty entertaining. But... I mean, he's not wrong. They're playing pretty bad baseball. They had a pretty bad series against the Orioles. Orioles are a phenomenal team, but 
winning the first game of that series, you're hoping to win at least two out of three in a series like that, especially on a day where the Mariners are off and the Astros are kind of skidding a little bit. They didn't get it done. Any quick thoughts on this John Schneider comment? He seems as fired up as he's going to be about the uh, season, but it might be too little, too late. Who knows? We've been waiting 130 games for him to get fired up in a post-game press conference. What you're sleeping at the wheel, John? Let's go here. But but that that's what I like to see. He's got to call out his players. And when it comes to the Jays and the Orioles, they were outclassed all season long. They didn't belong on the field with the Orioles. And can't believe I'm saying that after the the expectations that we had going into this year for the Blue Jays. But now is uh, now's crunch time. We spoke about the importance of getting the momentum in that Baltimore series. It ultimately didn't happen, but you have 15 games against subpar opponents coming up here, against sub-500 opponents, and you got to take advantage. Anything less than 11-4, and four, in my opinion. I saw people saying they'd be okay with 10-5. and five. Not me. 11-4 and four is the minimum that I would take in this 15-game stretch. And if it doesn't happen, then I'm going to be real concerned. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I saw that as well. I think Josh Goldberg tweeted ten and five, but eleven and four. We're going to need that if we want to have any hope of making the playoffs because the Mariners are playing unbelievable baseball. Everyone is playing unbelievable baseball aside from the Texas Rangers as of late. But that'll wrap up the video. A huge series starts today against the Cleveland Guardians. So hopefully they can take care of business after their very disappointing series in Baltimore. And Peter, it's going to be a very, very nerve-wracking next. Uh, 30 or so games. But thank you guys for watching. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.